Hello and welcome to the Offensive Zone Hockey Show with your host Ian and my co-host Tom Legard. Morning. And the man, the myth, the legend, the caveman, Chris Gill. Good afternoon. There you go. Is, did you, is that because I didn't do it? I'm going to say good evening. Yeah. <laughs> So, as always, we are bringing you the latest hockey news, or as late as we can. So, before we go to that, there's some good news. So, Eddie Ocek has beaten cancer, which is fantastic news. Obviously, as a Black Hawk fan, that's ah, it's good news great. for anybody, um, isn't it, really? So, there's been quite a few people who, unfortunately, had to deal with it this year, isn't there? In uh, lots of different things, but even in hockey, like Pierre... Pierre Maguire's dealt with it and stuff like that, but like Eddie O's been quite, it's been quite a hands-on quite, battle. If that makes sense, quite vocal, yeah, yeah. yeah it's been, it's a, uh, and like it's, it's good. It's, it's a nice story, yeah. Really, isn't it? It's good for him and his everybody involved with him personally as well, isn't it? And he's so, just he's one of those kind of guys in hockey where he is hockey, yeah. He's because, one of, because he's a commentator, but because he's on so much stuff anyway, and he gets so involved with the community on the Black Hawk side, he's just an absolute legend. So. Yep, so congratulations to him for beating it, and uh, and yeah, so uh, yeah, and that was the good news. Obviously, there was some bad news in the same week around uh, Carlson. Yeah. Uh, I obviously won't go on about that too much, but uh, it's, no, it must be awful for him and his it's family. It's so. terrible shame, isn't it? So. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's unfortunately, yeah, some good and some extremely bad. Um, so going back on to hockey... We had a franchise record. We had two records. One that was just after we finished recording last time, so I'm talking about us being the latest NHL news. <laughs> We're a little behind the curve on this, but Ovi hit 600, nice. which is he's, phenomenal. He's something else, isn't he? Like, right. He's the best goal scorer in ice hockey ever. I don't care. People are like, oh, well, look, Gretzky got a 1,000. Gretzky was shooting against me in goal, essentially. So... <laughs> <laughs> so. And like you just look him, everything okay. He might not be like he might just stand in his spot, but he scored six hundred goals pretty much standing in that spot. So yeah, he wait, must, wait, so he must have realised he's going to stand there. So he must be, there must be something about him. It's that, isn't it? It's, it's the. I think it's a bit of uh, both in that he is famous for standing on that right hand shot, whether it's kind of when they've got an offensive zone um, play going on, or kind of most likely uh, in, on the power play. Um, so he's got that standard go-to um, shot. He's also got bursting down the left wing and is either kind of pulling the puck between his skates or defender skates mm, yeah. and, and, and so on. And he's kind of known to have done that for so many times. But also then, one of the goals I remember, and I couldn't name the team, but I remember when he was kind of on his back sliding down and he kind of one hands it oh, behind his head. Against goal, Arizona. And, yeah, and you're thinking it's, mm. it's such kind of an attacking and kind of all-out offensive uh, attack or kind of play with him. It's just uh, amazing to see. He's, yeah. see. I remember that goal. People have probably said around the time, oh, it's fluke. But he must have known. Like He wasn't a try to throw the put towards the goal if he didn't know but the goal he was out of It's just a matter whether it was to, fluke or not. You've got to have the skill to yeah, be yeah, there, to have the agility know, to do what he did. I think it's all raw, raw natural ability. Yeah, honest, really. exactly. that's, so that's if I'm rolling on my back, one thing I'm thinking about is... Yeah. Oh, I'm going to have to get up in a second yeah. it's going to be a struggle <laughs> isn't it like, so. but when he I mean, going back to that goal and I know it's probably a few years now but when he did reach mm. behind the, his head with the stick it's amazing that if I mean if he had missed it nobody would have like even remembered or seen the thousands <laughs> yeah, yeah. if not millions of views that that clip now has it's, yeah. uh, it's pretty incredible but yeah um, yeah so how far away is he from do we know I guess Gretzky's the highest uh, yeah, goal scorer and I'm sure he must be uh, quite a way off that yeah he's he he is, he's never yeah. he's never going to reach that but I think he's going to be he might already be top 10 probably yeah he's I, top 10 yeah. Is he? he's, yeah, he's, he's right behind he's like, 3 or 4 yeah. he's already like behind like Brett Hall and stuff like that like stuff. Jerome McGinley is in the top 10 in fact I think Jerome McGinley actually might be above a vetch game I can't remember but He's, uh, yeah, it's, it's amazing. And what makes me laugh is that it was only like, you know, I'd say this time last year, the end of the season last year, where people were saying, like, no, yeah, he's maybe, maybe he's done, like they always do about these players, the second they, they and, said uh, it about he scored Crosby like 41 and... goals rather than 47, and they're like, that's it, he's done, he's, he's too fat, he's too slow. And then he's come back, and, I mean, maybe he's slimmer, I can't really tell. He's greyer. He's greyer, yeah. <laughs> Wiley, mate, obviously. And, uh, He's just, 
I mean, he is that franchise, isn't he? Like, well, he's leading, yeah. the, leading the league, isn't he? In, uh, in he goals. Is. goals. Um, Every year, isn't it? Probably not half of them are probably on power play, but it doesn't matter if you're scoring like, 50, 60 goals a season. 44. He has at the moment on. Patrick Line, who we were talking about this, um, you know, the collective we, we quite a few podcasts ago when I was talking about Matthews and Line, and the fact that Matthews gets all the limelight. Line, line forty three goals this season, and a huge number on the And that's, play. this is the sophomore yeah. slump. I mean, what is he going to score next season? Because yeah. that kid, he needs to sort his beard out. But that kid, yeah, is he amazing. looks like a goat, doesn't he? It's <laughs> horrific. <laughs> well, we, we just mentioned about Ovechkin and his uh, famous first standing on that blue. But I think Lane's goal um, half them on the power play, which is yeah. quite impressive. Yeah, yeah. Well, they, they are very. So people, you can you know, look, people can use it against him. So well, he only scores half his goal on the power play, but like every team wants to have a good power play. If you can have a goal, he scores. 22 goals a season on the power play who cares well, well, yeah. I'd have him yeah so <laughs> I think anybody would <laughs> I think this this the way the hockey is and you, you touched on it earlier in terms of saying about the goalies and the skill 5 on 5 goals are hard to come by mm. most teams score their goals on the power play which is why having a high power play percentage is a difference maker between the good teams and the bad teams as proven with Montreal as proven with you know Chicago so um, yeah 600 wow so there was another record as well, close to my heart. So uh, the Brinker got a hat trick, which is his third hat trick of the season, which means that is a Black Hawks franchise record. So he's the first rookie to ever net three hat tricks in one season. Patrick um, Kane took some like six hundred and something games to get his third hat trick oh, really? in regular in the regular season. Thing is. I know a lot of a shit on Chicago a lot. He's got them Just guys. He's got them guys <laughs> to play with. Like he has got the Patrick Kane, Jonathan Taylor. When they were coming up, they had I don't know Manny Malhotra or something. I don't even know who used Legend. to be like Martin Hans used to something to play with. That, that's who they were playing with, not the Patrick Kane's. But still, it's impressive. It's not nine goals. Yeah, I thought that this though. Year. <clears throat> but so. when you look at Debrinket. And, you know, other than sad Hawks fans like me, you probably won't, won't realise this, but Debrinket plays on the third line. So he's playing with, you know... I mean, he's playing with Yurko and Anisimov at the moment. I mean, you know, you're talking about Manny Mahojo. I mean, Jesus, he's not like he's not playing with Kane and Taves. So yeah. he, he is... He's, but he, he he's scores power play goals, and I think that's... We go back to what you said a minute yeah. ago, it makes a big difference, doesn't it? So, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's good for... And worst thing for me being a Montreal fan, that's a tra- that's a draft pick we gave you for Andrew Shaw. Montreal could have really done with maybe three extra hat tricks this season, <laughs> maybe one hat trick would have been this tender. season. So, but we'll, we'll come to Vesna in a bit. So, um, so we're going to move on to the playoffs. But just before we do, um, to one of the teams that's absolutely tearing it up at the moment is the Blue Jackets. Oh yeah, um, and to be fair, I'd written them off. Oh, I hadn't because I'm a Stanley Cup picks. Um, and they're nine, one, and zero in the last ten. Getting wow. hot when it matters. Yeah, absolutely. It's, <laughs> it's all about the run into uh, the playoffs now, isn't it? And the form to carry it through. I mean, there's, a, I think, another number of teams that are starting to um, to move forwards and just, make a late run for the call. I think St. Louis is another one where they've kind yeah. of um, they're, they're kind of probably last ten aren't. I don't know what that looks like, but I know they've kind of won the last seven, four. two, and one. Yeah, won the last four, Damn and good. they're starting to. Creep up into the um, last five. That's five now, yeah. Um, yeah, creeping up into uh, the wildcard places, and they're not too far away in the division as well to get a uh, divisional spot. Yeah. So to cover the clinches, uh, <laughs> those that already booked their spot in uh, the April Madness, uh, Nashville and Winnipeg from the uh, West. Nashville, not really a surprise. But Winnipeg, like they've been kind of building this team for a little while, and they've got such a, an amazing like core of players. Yeah, It'll be interesting it. to see what happens when they've got to sign them all, um, because they're going to have some cap issues like everyone else does. But they've got, you know, like people like Josh Morrissey, Ehlers, Kyle obviously Liner. We talked about him already, but like Kyle Connor, Connor. He's got like twenty eight goals this season as well. Hellebuck. So they've got a really good young depth, mm-hmm. and then they've got solid veterans, I guess, like Bufflin. Like they're not like. The grizzly vet you think of, but he is a veteran. And so like, Wheeler. Wheeler and stuff like that. But sometimes when you think of veterans, you think of, I don't know, a Brian Gionta or something skating out of there. But these guys are skilled players and they're still leaders as well, which hmm. best of both worlds but for a young team. Surely it makes it easier for that for team to commit to those players 
and maybe offer the package the package that kind of they they design that are kind of are, are worthwhile. Because if you think if you've got a team full of young guys who they're kind of maybe got as a prospect pool or kind of they're, they're kind of testing out, if they're not performing, it's a harder decision because you don't know what you want to do. Whereas if those guys that are all you just mentioned come into, they need signing at some point, it makes it an easy decision. Now I know that means you have to start playing with your your cap and where you are on the obviously on the on the on the salary. But if those guys are doing the job, they're putting a team where they are at the moment. You got to keep them. Yeah. yeah, and good news for Winnipeg is that if the cap goes up so high, I mean they're talking about it being somewhere between seventy eight and eighty five million. million but it? if it goes to eighty, I mean it, I don't think it'll get as high as eighty five. But imagine it goes to eighty two. It's seventy five at the moment. That's seven million. Well, it's a player. That's an impact that's a, player. That's a, that's a big player. So I'm wafting my hands in frustration just because of sport. I think is silly now. Right. I mean, basically, so we've. I'll come in, as all of our listeners know, I'll come in there uh, kind of dry to NHL and these guys are kind of a few years in uh, and I um, am only kind of joined this season. But why hasn't the league sorted this out already? Because it's, it's, like, they would have been signing players on the deadline like, and they might have been doing that for multiple years. Why are the rules not set for next year? Because they don't as like because it's stupid. But it's because it's based on hockey revenues in the year. I, I know that. Which so then they don't if they know did it on a twelve month rolling period, yeah, you could get the answer before the twenty eighth or whatever day the deadline is next year. You still have a twelve month period you're looking at, so the revenue would be the it would be the same seasonal variance. And stuff like, depends the on the me coming yeah. out here. I agree with you. And it's it, it depends what? on like the Canadian dollar and stuff like that as well, which Does they're it? struggling. Uh, yeah, because obviously they're running like the Canadian teams, like Toronto and Montreal, probably make more money for the team, but they're not actually making more money and stuff like that. So it, it, it is really complicated. I know it's complicated, but, but surely to help everybody understand, but also the teams to plan their workforce in effect um, for that time, just backdate it a year. Do, I yeah. mean, I know kind of it's it's done on a consensus of the income, but basically, so it takes a year to it, set so it. You have then a year's lag. Everybody's in the same position, but it gives people more flexibility and know what they're working towards. But do you think though that, although we don't know, as fans, do you reckon the GMs already yeah. know? And they're like, know boat, like bought, I said, uh, boat, vague then, number. Like, yeah, and Batman like takes them to the office and says, "Right, this is what it's going to be. It's what our prediction is." Probably get told every then, like season they, tickets are in, aren't they already? So. Other hockey revenues, the only real variable from now until the end of the season is general ticket sales that aren't season tickets and then merch and concessions. That's it. Yeah. I probably agree with you in that they have more of an indication than us. I still think they've probably got a smaller margin. But it's still a margin. But that, that smaller margin could still be two or three million. Yeah. Which, is when you guys player, talk yeah. about kind of um, year salary and stuff, that's probably still a. A decent, I don't know, third, fourth line that could make a difference. Well, look at Stasny. And the Stasny move was blatantly because they were worried that they weren't going to re-sign him in the off-season or be able to afford to re-sign him in the off-season. And like years gone by when they've done that in the past and they've just had to let the player go on to free agency, they wanted to get something for him. So you're right, I think it would change the way that teams react during the season as well as mm-hmm. deadline. But... Um, Let's say, say it goes I mean, up. last year went up by yeah. nothing. So, I mean, yeah. the last couple of years, it's barely gone up. This is the first big jump. Um, the cynics might say it's it's awfully good timing for Toronto, but uh, it's, mm-hmm. yeah, 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 if it goes up by another five million next year, you're like, hang on a minute. But uh, <laughs> Just in time. It's, to be fair, it's good timing for, uh, you know, a Chicago and a lot of other teams, but uh, it's... So if it did go up to 85, what is it now? 75. 75, so that's another 10 million. That's like... That's a John Tavares money. What that's it. Another or, or a, uh, a Brad Seabrook, so. <laughs> or it could be coming I two. I'd say I would maybe look at it half empty, but kind of um, that means it's two five mil players, which well, is still two like good second line players. What did uh, Bailey sign for? Five million a year. Watch a Master Show. Wasn't he five million four, a year? Or four, no, five or six, isn't that? Five. So you, yeah, I mean six million. I'm a bit funny. Is is a, a bloody good player? It just, so. I don't know. It, it winds me up a little be. bit, as you can probably tell, because. <laughs> yes, everybody's in control of this, but we make it harder for people to understand. And if if we're now competing in a league that's governed by that salary cap, then you got to give 
the teams the best opportunity up, yeah. to make make the team kind of viable and work for the organisation in whatever budget they may have be able to put a team on the ice. But also then that has an on effect for the fans and, 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 and what they're going on because of what will happen is with all the shirt sales and, and so on, if kind of, I don't know, a player gets traded or whatever and that might be their favourite player, they either kind of increase shirt sales or they go down and stuff. It's just like you want to know where you are. I think for certain teams it does it does affect quite a lot, but then I think other teams they don't really have to plan. Like obviously, with general managers, so, oh, I can't give you that much money because the cap's not going to that much, and then you might get a surprise. Oh, okay, you can have that signing bonus, but then yeah. teams like I don't know Detroit, maybe not Detroit, sorry, uh, Toronto, Montreal, Chicago, they don't have to worry about actual finances really. But then the teams like Arizona and the New York Islanders, well, they, got their own they cap, have to they? watch. Like they do, and they, that might be an issue thing. So they might not, what, not might not know what the cap floor will be as well. If the cap floor goes up ten million. It's a problem. That's a problem for the teams like Florida and I don't know about Carolina because how much the new owner has in his pocket. But do you know what I mean? It is an issue. So if you don't hit the floor and I don't, obviously you know what the penalties are when they go over it. But I don't know. Yeah, if, pretty. I don't know what the penalty is for going under. Well. So. Yeah, they're pretty they're pretty harsh both ways because they want to keep the league parity in there. They want and it is working. I mean, we we're going to run through the playoffs in a minute, but they are, you know, there are still with a couple of weeks to go. You know, four or five teams on each side of the, uh, of the, West, the, of the Western standings are just swapping left, right, and centre. Who's in, like LA? I think yes, they were playoff like, another like night, the yeah. fifth like bloody. Wild card spot, mm. and then now they're out of the playoffs by two spots or something, which is it's good. It's good. It is good it's, for the game. It is so. good for the game, but I, I take your point in terms of it's about planning because when you get to the re-sign phase, which is technically is all the way up until the draft, isn't it? Realistically, yeah. and they'll yeah. know they'll know the cap. The cap is released. Is it straight after? Yeah, the I think playoffs? it's during the playoffs. I think it's during. I, I so, thought it was, yeah, they're around the same time they released uh, the uh, think, draft picks as well. Which yeah, is during the playoffs. I think it? they do. They do like the playoffs. They do like throughout the playoffs. I think I don't know round two they'll have the draft lottery. Yeah. Next round they'll have the cap, and the next round they'll have like who's going to win the so up for nominations. The, the big thing it would change is the deadline because you'd see people either holding on to players that they may have moved because of fearing that they might not be able to afford them or. Maybe the other way happen. around, making a move, aggressive move for a player that maybe costs a lot, that they now know they can afford, like a Carlson. Obviously, Carlson was the hot topic at the deadline. But because he comes with a, what's he on now? Six million or something at the moment. Yeah. He's clearly going to be more like 10 in a year, a couple of years' time. If you know it's going to go up by seven or eight this year, it's not going to go down. Hmm. So you can plan, not just for next year, but you can plan ahead to make the bigger like marquee moves. Yeah. Um, so, talking of playoffs, then. So, if I'm going to run through where everyone where everyone's at. So, in terms of the East, obviously, uh, Tampa Bay and Boston are two clinchers. Um, the Atlantic has just been absolutely mental. You've got like the 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 two, well, the three probably best, you know, best teams yeah. in the Eastern Conference, and then the three worst. So, you've got Tampa Bay <laughs> on 106, Boston on 104, and Maple Leafs on 97. Um, then you're in the Metropolitan, you've got. Washington on 95, Penguins on 92, and the Blue Jackets, as we we're saying, uh, actually lost their game. So they, they were on a 10 game win streak before they lost uh, last night. And uh, yeah, and they're on 89, which is exactly the same as Philadelphia, the Flyers, who are on 89, New Jersey on 86, and then it comes down to Florida on 83. And the Hurricanes, I think they're kind of out of this now, but they're on 77. Yeah, they're now, the, out. Fl- Fl- Florida, you're going to... difference Florida maker here is... And the irony is, um, actually, before I move on to this, the Rangers are above the Islanders. The other Rangers, the team that was tanking <laughs> this season, are actually, uh, actually uh, what, seven from bottom in the conference, which is better than a team I'll come to in a minute. Um, so, so Florida on 83... Two points behind, three points behind the Devils, but they've got two games in hand. Seventy-three games played. I had a look at the run-in on both these teams. I can't remember what they were, but I had a look at them because my, yeah, you know, obviously, brother's a New Jersey fan, so I was talking to him on Saturday about it, and uh, they've both got tough teams. They both play Boston a fair bit, and they both play Tampa Bay, and um, or 
teams are back though, towards the end of the season and dial it in a bit. They're just like me. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna go and throw my face in front of a shot when I've already made the playoffs. Yeah. And stuff. Like that. Whereas Florida and New Jersey are going to be. They're going to be. It's going to be a lot of yin and yang. Like one team's going to be absolutely trying 110. The other team might be making their goalie healthy scratch. Bergeron might not play. Marshall might not play in their games because. They're not going to risk them to injury and nothing games when we've got the Stanley Cup playoffs starting. I agree. In a so week. I can see Florida sneaking in, you know. Yeah, I, uh, I like their team better than New Jersey. I don't know what's going on with New Jersey. I don't know how they're still up there. Six I look, four at, and I, I look at their team and I just don't. I don't get it at all. So I don't, <laughs> I don't see. I see like Kyle Palmieri, yeah, Taylor Hall, yeah, then, amazing, and then it's Nico Hirsch, Hirsch Nico Hirsch. that good. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. He's but, so, isn't he? He's, he's, oh, he's, a, he's a rookie, and he's so. Yeah. He's a rookie, but he's not like. I mean, you look at Florida, on the other hand, Hubido, Troy Cech, Barkov, Ekblad, Luongo in goal. Like, they've got a what? really. I mean, how good is he? Really like, if he could stay fit all season. It's the thing, like, literally. At his age. Like. They, they were gone and done out of the playoffs. He came back from injury, and he's. And they were like, oh, okay, we, we, we can make the playoffs now. He's got so. like a nine. Two, three, or something, say percentage. I'm like I'm 41 years there. old or whatever. It's, it is. it's ridiculous. So, going down to the bottom of the Eastern Conference, then. Yeah. Um, the rock bottom is the Buffalo Sabres on 58. They That's are no terrible. Shock. I actually um, watched the game the other day. Montreal vs. I was like, okay, may, maybe we can lose so we can get a better pick. I don't, I don't <laughs> think. I don't think. They are probably one of the worst NHL teams I've seen in the last few years. Wow, well, they are worse than they were when Colorado they got Jack last Michael. year. Was free. Oh, they, they, they are quite terrible. Proud of that. <laughs> <laughs> they are terrible. It's a record. Um, so then, only a couple of places above them, but five points ahead of them on sixty-three is the Ottawa Senators. Um, and boy, they're not having a good year either. Uh, and I, this, so we're talking about Ovi and six hundred goals. Kind of cover it on the pad here. How many goals this season do you think Bobby Ryan has? Six. God, I don't know how you've made it seem like what he's got is a good score. It's more than six. Oh. <laughs> Not many. 17. No. 12. No, I'll bet just say because it's going to last the whole podcast. <laughs> and it probably isn't very good. He's got nine goals. Nine? He scored last night to get to nine. See, Bobby how Ryan... How is that? He's on nearly seven million. Like, if he, if he was on like three million... I'd play him on my third nine line. Goals. I'd play him on third line because he's got size, he's got a bit of skill, but nine goals. Nine goals? Yeah, it's not good. Brent Seabrook has six, for fuck's sake. It's, D- it's Duncan, Ke- Duncan Keith has one. <laughs> yeah. <that's>, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. So, uh, <laughs> just for that. So, just above them on 65, Detroit, and just above them on 66, hashtag falling for darling, is the Montreal Canadiens. Huge game tonight. Montreal versus Detroit. Whoever wins, loses. <laughs> yeah, so, um, seven, uh, two, seven, and one. Montreal in the last ten. Yeah, we haven't been Happy good. Days. Exactly. The thing is, like, we've shown flares. I'm like, okay, like we've put the kids been playing. Like Sherbat's come up and he's put a few goals and he's been making moves. Oh, okay, that's good. And then they like put get dumped in. Jordy Ben will get it, pass it out into the slot to Ovechkin one timer. <laughs> so, right, I, I think they've see, got a plan to lose. I was going to ask this later. I'll ask it now. Price has come back, yeah, right, and he's still crap. He's not now. Is crap. he crap or is the team in front of him the crap? Because I'm seeing goals go in that he should be saving. <laughs> the team in front of him, like he, I watched like the first 15 minutes of a game on Saturday, really, mean? and he's like he's throwing out the glove saves and everything. And then when he's had like the 20th shot in the first period, I think he's just had enough. I think he just wants to recharge the batteries over some of the train because he's been doing it for the past seven years. I, I have a team on his back. And I, I think if a guy's doing that, I think he's allowed to hear off. Now, I want to believe you, mate. I do. And I really hope we see an old Carey Price because you're going to be paying a shitload for him in the years to come. But I think he could be bad, like bad for of... three years and the team was still paid pay through a roof for him. Yeah, I agree. I but the, the stats that he's had in the last four or five games, you're talking like you know eight eight shots and he lets in three. But that's you, not Carey you, Price. That, you, that's Scott Darling. That's not Carey Price. But if you look at the goals he's letting in, like um, he let what like, six in against Washington, like two of them. Okay, yeah, he probably should have had. But then the other ones, it's like okay, you've got because Nets are coming down back door all, all alone. Oh, oh, oh. She's just passing it. Okay, he used to be able to get them. He probably could still get them, but is he going to think, oh, okay, I'm going to throw my groin out to make this save when my D-men are still just turning around at their own blue line? Like, nah. 
But then so, maybe it would have been better to have just shut him down. Shut him down. Yeah. He, he, he it's a bit of motivation, is, isn't it, really? The thing is, you can, say, you, you can say that to any professional. Like The fans said it after I said, oh, I should shut him down. If you asked any professional, oh, I'm just, you, you're perfectly healthy, I'm just not going to play you. Yeah? I don't, yeah, I, 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 I don't think any price is that yes. sort of guy. He's, he's quite, you know, yeah. he wants to play. He, he's want, a he wants. Guy. He wants to turn. It, I think he. I think he wants to get his game back to a degree. I mean, I think he's going to go to World Championships, and then he will get happens. it back there. Play on a competent team. Yeah, yeah. So I think it's. Um, it, it, I think shutting him down probably is the, the wrong way. But I know you guys can't make playoffs now. It is mathematical. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that kind of maybe has a bit of a input into kind of guys' motivation or I guess care in that they just want to kind of coach through the final few kind of because uh, yeah. if you think about world championships, like well, I don't really want to get me injured because I'll, I'll fancy doing that. That's going to be yeah. something on there. Got a free holiday, can, yeah. And that's his <laughs> well, it's free holiday, but it's a chance for him to win something out of this season, right? Yeah. Um, and that's kind of probably what he's doing now is trying to get ready for that yeah but just kind of maybe take a little bit more of a lighter approach to it Uh, before we cover the Western Conference the Wild West I think it's time to rack the beers out because I'm I'm dying to thirst I do not think you were ever going to ask I've been excited so today we're doing it a bit different aren't we because oh you've chosen mate I've got the beers for, for once and they are yeah. pretty good and somebody's beers. Somebody's been out on so, multiple nights out with you. It's a rarity. Yeah. So, there, <laughs> so there's the beer. Thank you. It is and all the way. Pronounced... It's Bruges Zot. It's all the way Bruges from Zot. Bruges in Belgium. Oh, man. Actually, all the way actually from actually bought, not Tesco's. Nope. And <laughs> well, I don't know if he he, he didn't go, <laughs> no no he didn't go over to buy it, but he goes on some. My friend gave me them because oh, I went up to see my friend in Stoke and he has like a vast collection of Belgian beers. Yeah, and uh, yeah, and it's from uh, Bruges. The the brewery's really old, like really old. So I'll, I've got it on my phone how old it is to be precise. It was made in, where is it? Okay, 1564 the brewery was. But then it got like different owners over time, and then one owner, one family had it for two hundred years, but yeah. they, they all died in World War One. And uh, it's a happy story. Yeah, and then, <laughs> then, uh, then as not well, from the beer though. Uh, no, no. no. That's right. and then, then this, <laughs> beer, this beer was created in two thousand. So, it's like, apparently, oh. it's the way to pour it. Like, apparently, so because it reduces yeah. the hops. Some, so some smart person told me. Um, I don't know if you like it. <laughs> <laughs> I do. It's, uh, You're not it's, you know, it's got it's got, an, it's got a unique taste. What unique taste were you going to expect? Yes, I don't know. I've got the aromas and stuff on here as well. It's, uh, it's, it's citrusy. Are we going to rank this intro? Get aroma of citrus and hops. See, I'm not as like good at talking about beer as Tom, so I probably should have just gave this to him to read, and he would have probably. Got it first time. There is a pleasant bitterness and a dry finish, supposedly. Dry finish. Dry yeah. finish. Fine. Well, at the moment, mine's about ninety percent head, so I'll have to wait till it, till it uh, pulls down. So whilst my uh, head is d- diminishing, <laughs> moving on. So we're going to talk about the Western Conference. So Nashville and Winnipeg, as I said earlier, are the two teams that have clinched. One is on one hundred and seven, and Winnipeg, uh, uh, Winnipeg, on one hundred and two. Um, so Nashville actually top the NHL at the moment. Not that anybody gives a shit. Um, so fuck Nashville. <laughs> yeah. Um, Minnesota Wild on ninety three are the next place in the Central. Uh, Vegas top the Pacific uh, Division on one hundred one, uh, and San Jose are second on ninety five, and Anaheim Ducks on ninety one. So in terms of wild card. We have Colorado in the top uh, wildcard spot on 90 points. But this is where it gets mental, as you were saying earlier, Chris. You've got Colorado on 90, uh, the Blues on 89, uh, the Kings on 89, and the Stars on 84. I think the Stars are done because they're on an eight-game losing streak. Absolute shit. And they've checked out. Yeah. Yeah. Like somebody mean. somewhere has already booked their tickets. And you look at their team as well. Like, okay, they've got a sick first line. Like, don't, there's not many better in the NHL. And Radulov, Jamie Benn, and Sagan. But the rest of the team, yeah, it's nothing special. Klimberg, yeah, okay. And then Ben Bishop, when he plays once every four months because he's always injured, because he's got bad knees and hips because he's so tall and made of glass. 
So. I don't, I don't, I'm not a fan of Dallas anyway. So. Yeah, big fan of Dallas, as we can tell. <laughs> I think it's really interesting to, for it to be this close with so many teams in it. Yeah. Um, I, want, I want LA to do it. I don't particularly like LA, but... See if they make the expense of who, though? Because mm. at the moment, I can't see who they're going to fill. Cause I think, I think they've sent Lewis... I don't think it's a five game win streak, 17 1. I don't know. But yeah. I only want LA to make it because they send us a draft pick. They make the playoffs. Yeah, so. I, think it's gonna be, <laughs> I think it'll be Colorado and LA. Yeah, that's uh, what I yeah. think so. That's my... LA, San Jose, first round. I think the Alps are still if chasing down goes. their third place because I believe we've got a game in hand you know, on the wild. Yeah, uh, I, don't, I don't see the wild make. You have not. I don't, see the, I don't see the wild making it either. They're getting carried by Eric Stahl. You know, right. the Wild and the Avalanche, I'd cut you over there, Chris, have got identical last 10 records, 6 2 and 2. I mean, it, it, like, I know it's the old like, pundit phrase, but it is going to go down the wire here because, uh, yeah, sign me up ESPN. They've, uh, you know, like, the, the Eastern, why are you talking about Florida and that's about it, really, in terms of who could sneak in? But in the Western Conference, I mean, it's not. I mean, Calgary are done. Mathematically, they're not done. But they're done. But it's LA stars, I suppose. The Blues and Avalanche. But the thing that makes it more interesting in the West is that the Anaheim Ducks could go on like an absolute skid now and fall out altogether. Mm. Yeah. See the, because, because the two wild cards teams since from Ga- the Central. Since Getzlaff's come back, they have been really good. But still, it's, I wouldn't like to be any of the teams who are on the bubble of being in a wild card spot or not because they're going to get down to that wild spot that their, their open season because mm-hmm. the teams from Central can just come in and screw them over so if it finished today if I can do my playoff thing right here top team in the league plays the, the lowest wild card doesn't mm-hmm. it which means that Nashville will play the Blues uh, it then means that Vegas will play Colorado in the first yep. first good, round. Good. Two good, good two good rec playoff rounds there, uh, and you have San Jose and Ducks and yeah, Winnipeg okay. and Winnipeg and Wild. So Winnipeg Wild, yeah. But then San Jose versus Ducks would be a good one as well because locals, rivalries and all that. So I can't wait. I'm gonna probably lose my sleep a few times during the playoffs, but I love it. There's nothing like it. Like, so when do the playoffs start? It will probably be about the twelfth of April. Oh. So we usually the <laughs> we don't care. <laughs> we haven't got it etched in our calendars. So. <laughs> but it's They're usually like the season finishes of the ninth. There's usually like a three or four day layover. Yeah, it's and then years, it? they'll just they'll and then the get going. Like, yeah, it's absolutely um, insane. And things that there is no Chicago in the playoffs this season. I, I think I'm going to pick a team to back. Go on, and I'm going to back. Win- I see, uh, I'm all I'm going to do is give whoever it is the kiss of death of not making a play. I'm, I'm going to pick Winnipeg. I, I think I'm going to back Vegas because uh, not any of the curse, right? <laughs> you just want to fight me, don't you? The, yeah, uh, the yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> it's that. And you have to pick one East. I, one I reckon East Vegas East. with home advantage and the way they play at home. I think they could go far on the playoffs. So I'm, I'm going to back Vegas. Yeah, but that's not. I'm going to go out on a limb and if back you, the team that's got. But a then if you look at like. Them their home atmosphere. They haven't been like you go to like Boston in regular season. It's like yeah, okay. You go to Boston in the playoffs. So like you're lucky to get out there alive if you're wearing like a, a Toronto jersey or something, and you just spill your beer everywhere. <laughs> is, it, is it too too hoppy? Bloody, too hoppy. Too hoppy. <laughs> Oh, so you think then you know, with the I don't know. advantage that Vegas would have, they can't take it up another notch? I don't know, they might be able to, we don't know, but to say like, oh, their home has a nice advantage is going to give them an extra thing, so I don't know. I think, it's a I think it does, say. I think it does, and I, I, I could say you do feel it, but then it's just whether everybody takes it up a notch, don't they, mm. when they're kind of into that kind of place, the place is always packed out. And some places take it even further, like, so the team, like Toronto will be crazy to be at oh, it's Vegas man yeah Vegas and like you're going to get fans from Hawaii coming over to gamble yeah yeah, yeah. who are going to be drunk out of their heads it's going to yeah. be a great atmosphere and they're not going to go they're going to go John, they're going to butcher their players names more than I do Jonathan Mars yeah, yeah. yeah it doesn't matter but uh, <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll see man I've got to back somewhat mate and, uh, I'm picking Winnipeg and I can't back Nashville just Columbus. because it won't allow me nah so. No, I couldn't bear it to, if Nashville won the Stanley Cup 
old PKC when it's still there, I think I'd have to deactivate my Twitter. Because it would be <laughs> absolutely good. But well, you heard it here first. So don't deactivate yeah. our Twitter. Because <laughs> we still want I to generally would never go. If, P, if they were in the Stanley Corp, I won't go on Twitter until the draft. <laughs> Already backpedalling. <laughs> it's just a Chris Gill guarantee. Yeah. <laughs> so, so that's that's where the playoffs are at. Do you want to run through predictions? Yeah, we can do. So, uh, have you got the scores there? I have uh, the scores. Ooh. Uh, me. So, for this season, um, we all at probably, should you say, 10, 15 games in? Yeah. I think we uh, decided to uh, put together a, a season predictor that mm-hmm. um, kind of had people um, predicting kind of the top three and each wildcard, or two wildcard places um, in the. Um, league and basically we got two points for a correct position in uh, prediction in the correct position and then one point if they were ranked in the top three or the uh, wildcard places um, and out of us three because I'll leave uh, the additional uh, one out of it for the time being <laughs> um, but out of uh, us three we have uh, Tom so that's myself um, <laughs> leading on 16 points Ian on 14 yeah. And Chris on twelve. So what this says is actually our prediction. So you, the maximum you can get is forty points. So fifty percent is twenty. So we're just under, as a group, fifty percent um, predictions yeah. kind of so far out. So I know we were kind of probably starting to shape and had some thoughts with some early, uh, early kind of um, results already uh, in. But it'd be really <laughs> interesting to see how we. Uh, how we kind of uh, finish up at the end with uh, only a few games to go, um, but also for the start of next season, do it before anybody uh, plays a game. Yeah. So, do you want to know why you're in last place, Chris? Go on, man. Why am I in last place? <laughs> I'm staring at your uh, prediction team. I think I was bold and. So, your Atlantic things. was Tampa, Toronto, and Ottawa. Okay. That's, what, that's two out of three. Hey, two uh, out of three, that's all right. That's not far off. I thought Ottawa, oh, Carlson and... Columbus is your Metro winner. Yeah, just, okay, now it's... you mocked me. I remember you mocked me. And now, okay, they're, they're in a wild card spot. They <laughs> win it, though. Uh, this is where it all goes best, though, for you. Your West, your West is, is, is out. Who else you got in the, the Metro? Blues. Oh, you got the rest of the, rest of the Metro, is all right, mate. you got Pittsburgh, Philly and uh, yeah. Washington, so that's potential. Potential. There you go. And then re- the Western. Blues, you had... Blues, Dallas, mm. and Nashville in your west. That's one out of three. And uh, Pacific, <laughs> you had LA and San Jose, which is not bad, although in the wrong place, and Calgary. Calgary? So, Calgary, yeah. Oh, shit. But to be wow. fair, though, everyone had, and Edmonton as well, but we'll leave that. <laughs> yeah, everybody's got their bad uh, predictions, haven't they, Ian? Um, no. Before I hand <laughs> over my laptop to Chris to give me um, some uh, shit at the end of it, I wanted to talk about <laughs> Ian's predictions. So, Ian had uh, for the Western Conference winners, or the kind of Central Division winners, Ian, where? Chicago. Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> Followed which, by... uh, which are long gone. Followed by Dallas. So. They're kind of still, we kind of maybe wrote them off a little bit, but they were there or thereabouts. Um, and then also in the Pacific, Ooh. Ian has uh, picked up Edmonton as being a uh, third place, which looks also so I'd like to point out, when I picked that, it looked pretty good. Cause my, I actually, my, we didn't, I thought we did them pre the season beginning, but I, I certainly did mine pre the season. You did it beginning, early, but, yeah. early in the season. Um, so. Edmonton weren't quite as bad as at that no, point. Ed- Edmonton should be better than we are. Well, McDavid should be able to do more than he is. But I did... Uh... <laughs> Blame all of McDavid. Yeah. So, well, I'll hand so... over the laptop to Chris because I know there's one team he's going to pick out. Tampa, yeah. Toronto oh. and Boston, man. That's that. Okay, your team. Yeah, Metro. It's all right. You got Detroit in there. It's pretty stupid to put them in there. <laughs> I'll let you off. Uh, say, hey, hang on. In the Atlantic. <laughs> you talk, just talk... He's got Ottawa second in the Atlantic ahead of Toronto. Bloody, he hasn't even got Boston anywhere in there. Yeah, so. uh, by he, obviously you mean Leggy. I'm sorry, his, I'm just his, annoyed. Never, people can't see who you're talking <laughs> about. <laughs> so, so, so the rest of it's okay. Yeah, but he, he didn't even watch NHL last season. Nah, I don't. <laughs> like, the rest we is, haven't got any excuses, right? See, his central is pretty good. I can see why he's winning, actually. He's got... Yeah, Vegas. St. Louis in there. Um, Nashville. Pacific. Chicago. Mm. Winnipeg and Colorado, so mm-hmm. four out of five, and then LA, Vegas, yep, Anaheim. 
So mm. the only the only two I can mock him about are Detroit and Ottawa. But then I've got Ottawa and uh, other, other terrible teams. <laughs> <laughs> There's not many of us though that have uh, predicted the right teams in the right positions. No. Which is, like, uh, but that's that's to be fair though when you've got league parity like we've got that's not that's not a massive surprise really we'll, we'll so, have to do one when the playoffs start and get a lot of people to join in and then we do like a little you know they do like March Madness in the NBA um, the college basketball we've already done that oh, Chris we've already done it yeah. no but no with, <laughs> with, with the official matchups with the official matchups and then like we pick up we do like a bracket challenge yeah like a bracket yeah. challenge that's all yeah so um Trying to just stand in the beer that I've spilled. Um, well, so other than obviously the interview that we've got, and I've managed to stand in the beer that I've spilled, um, <laughs> and the interview that we've got with Rob, which obviously will be following following this, I think that's probably about it for this week. Um, we will be covering uh, trophy predictions around the heart and stuff, but things that there's about, oh yeah, yeah, yeah sorry, we've sort of been leaking, I nearly forgot. Um, yeah, well, that's yeah. Well, this is why they're going well rehearsed. This is this proves that we don't we don't edit, by the way, guys. So, uh, do you want, should we do the beer league, mate? Before we uh, we'll do the scores. Move on to the interview. So, Ian, how, how do you, you like your first? beer? I can't I can't do my beer first because. All right. So the first topic is appearance. The bottle and stuff. A bottle. bottle and label shit. Yeah. Have you seen the lid of a bottle as well, mate? It's a bit different. I, I, so I've, I've seen. I've seen it. I've seen it. I spilled it, but I've seen it. Oh, I'm not a big fan of the bottle, mate. Sorry, man. <laughs> it still looks like a. He yeah. wants a bottle that's not a bottle, basically. <laughs> pretty much, he wants yeah. a can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. So, you know why though? Because this is only how many milliliters in this? Yeah, it's pretty smart. It's six percent, in fairness. So it makes up for the alcohol. I'm, I'm chuffed with the six percent. Like, it's a good night when you start drinking beer that's six percent to start off with. Or a bad night, whichever way around you look at it. But it's a pretty small bottle, mate. It's 33 centilitres. It's enough to enjoy the fine hot taste and the citrusy aroma. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sold on the bottle, mate. Sorry. Oh. So that's going to get a two. <laughs> a two? A two, yeah. Oh, brutal. This guy. Can I go back and change my, his favourite beer store? <laughs> Give Is this your favourite beer? Give him donuts for all over, yeah. <laughs> you didn't say that at the start. I thought, just thought you the boys would have known. <laughs> <laughs> was he even your we birthday the other week and we didn't even know that? <laughs> yeah. What a random restaurant that was. But anyway. Um, te- was it Teppanyaki we went to? Yeah. This is such, so boring for everyone who's listening, but I don't yeah. care. So, <laughs> tasty, mate. I had some sushi. Getting insight into some, our lives. Some beer. I that happy. sushi, that was the first time I ever tried sushi. I have to say, I thought it was shit. <laughs> oh. like, I'm not a big fish man anyway, to be honest. I rather probably have beef. Not the, probably not the type um, of food to eat then, is it? Probably. <laughs> Raw fish. But, <laughs> as, as, as Leggy said when I was sat there, you can get beef sushi. It's but, nice. if I'm having beef, I'd rather have it with something that isn't like seaweed and shit like that. Just, just, I'm, 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 I'm hearty, mate, I'm sorry. I, I, I've, but, the way it's cooked though, I would want all my dinners cooked like that. <laughs> like go for like steak and chips, and he cooks so it on one of those massive uh, and you got to, you plates. Yeah. Egg in my face and chips. I thought you caught it, it though. Good. I did catch it. Like a he, hey, Giddy, Giddy wasn't dropping food, was he? For nothing. <laughs> so, <laughs> He's a keeper at the end of the day. Mm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he won't catch books in your mouth, mate. <laughs> <laughs> got that appearance and aroma. Mm. So it's got a bit of a weird. It's it is cloudy, cloudy isn't it? isn't I, like it, but it, I literally yeah. can't see anything through it uh, it's alright the, the aroma's a bit weird though but I, I think it's different so I'm not going to say it's bad aroma so I'm going to give it a oh take the hooks now <laughs> <laughs> could make or break its position I'm going to give it a four ooh, 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 ooh. and uh, taste yeah so oh, tastes pretty good it's not quite a five though, I'm afraid Chris not quite a five I can't really get... It's like a Belgian beer. <laughs> it Do you know what tastes... I mean? Like when you have like... You have like... Some like craft beers. Like a San Miguel. Like, yeah. Well no, not a San Miguel. But you know you have like a craft beer. No, no, you Sam... have like a lager. Like a San Miguel. And then you have like... Something which is a bit... It is a bit heavier. But... Hmm. That's like my it. opinion. Oh, I'm going to give it a... I, I'm, I'm caught between a three and a four. But I'm going to give it a four. Oh. 
Ooh. Ooh. Only because I don't want Chris to cry. So that's uh, that's favourite beer being marked down. Table of ten for uh, solid Ian. one. Patrick Sharp. Okay, I'm. Uh... <laughs> All right. So let's have a look at the bottle label. Um, it's very Joker heavy, isn't it? So we've got because Joker there's a story in. behind that. Oh, I didn't know the bloody story. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, I told you, I'm not really good at really telling stories. Uh... Okay. <laughs> they got the story, got the name, back in bloody some century. Oh, they're a king, Maximilian of Austria, Emperor Maximilian of Austria, of Austria <laughs> visited, <laughs> and, he, and he witnessed a parade of jesters and madmen, fools called Sotten. Afterwards, the citizens of Bruges asked the emperor for a Sotius, or a madhouse in English, <laughs> whereupon he responded, a madad. A madhouse is all I have seen today. And then the sot beer was created. Back in bloody when there's kings of Austria. Might still be. but So that's why there's sots on it. Because that's what it is. A jester. Oh, there you go. Okay. Yeah, well, I'd have known that if you'd told us at the beginning. Uh, I should have given notes <laughs> to Tom, should I? Well, yeah, well, I think uh, they've, they've gone to town, really, on it. I mean, it's got a picture of a jester or joker on the uh, the cap. The top label and the bottom label. Um, so they've definitely identified themselves with the Joker. Um, yeah, I think it's a, it's a standard bottle. Nothing really um, out of the ordinary. A bit of gold labelling. That's it. So I'm going to go for a, a three. Uh, it's a little bit different. It's uh, not a standard label. So, yeah. It's a different they've shape. Got, got yeah, the it's small. It's, yeah. 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 <laughs> Appearance and aroma. Um, it's like it's definitely pond. cloudy. Definitely cloudy. I like that. Cloudy golden um, piece, um, but the appearance for me, I think the appearance is right. The, yeah, it's the aroma. The aroma. Mm-hmm. It's a bit odd, but it's probably not something that I'm familiar with. I don't drink a huge amount of uh, Belgian beers, so I'm going to go with a two then. And then finally, <laughs> um, taste and flavour. I think it's all right, I can drink it. Um, probably not as much citrus. As it claims to have in the description, or at least Chris's description. So I'm going to go with a I'll three. I'll read the wrong description. At the end. Good. So for me, that totals eight. <sighs> I don't think I've got a winner, even if I gave it five across the board. No. But I'm not, I'm not going to be biased. <laughs> We've got a Montreal Canadian season so, coming out here. <laughs> I'm going to. The bottle label, I like it. It's not an, a usual shape, it's like an old school bottle. Like, you go, like, you see, like, the little monks making it in there. Brewery, they have like a bottle like this. Mate, that's probably the shape bottle for the was it eighteen forties probably. That's yeah, right. probably mate. Probably back then, did they drink less beer? Yeah, well, no, <laughs> they were smaller. They were smaller. Yeah, that actually was a pint. It was a huge. Yeah. It was a stein. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I do like the shape, and as as you know me, I'm easily pleased to uh, having three jesters all over the bottle will entertain me to know to lots of. For lots of time, so you, you were swayed gonna... by a, uh, a polar bear and glasses. Exactly. Last, uh, show, I'm going to have to give it for the bottle and label a four because that's what enticed me into it originally when I first started drinking it. And I scoring of the bottle and label. Keep going, Chris. Yeah. So the smell. I'm never really a big fan of smells, am I? So <laughs> and I just like the taste. So I'm going to have to give it middle of the road three. Well, so, this, is your, this is your beer. My beer, yeah. yeah. When I drink yeah, a beer, yeah. I drink the taste of it. I like the taste. Well, that's all. The last colour was appearance and aroma. Yeah, appearance. So, oh, oh, okay. Look at him, like, so can we guess the taste is a five? Yeah, the taste is a five. <laughs> Solid five. It smells. Oh. It smells all right, but it tastes nice. I like the bitterness it. in it. And I've drank, drank quite a lot of it before. It's, I can drink a lot of it, even after yeah. really bad hangovers from it. So. so there we have it, people. Chris scores his favourite beer, 12 out of 15. <laughs> 12 out of 15. <laughs> Respectable. Which, uh, with all of our scores of Ian on 10, myself on 8, and Chris on 12, totals 30, which puts... Is it Zot? Zot. Bruge Zot. Bruge Zot, yeah. Um, puts it in... Who are not going to be sponsoring this podcast. Fifth. Tied fifth. Time for solid. Wild we're card. gonna do a play- wild card, baby. <laughs> well, I think that's what we'll yeah. do is we'll uh, kind of do our own uh, playoff. Oh yeah, brackets. Yeah. For the, uh, what, we, what we need is a real test and like how many how many pints, how many drink. bottles does it take to get drunk? That, that should be a score. And but, uh, I think I might 
Why don't we uh, try and get to a playoff uh, game and we will have a, a bottle of gold. Bottle each, maybe. yeah, maybe. Bottle of gold. Um, so this is probably about the right time to uh, to wrap the show up, guys. So, um, yeah, so from us, really, it's, it's thanks, obviously, for everyone who's listening. Um, thanks for downloads. Obviously, you can find us on iTunes, Stitcher, and 12 OZ Sports Radio. Um, you know, as always, please get in touch with the show at... Um, at our Twitter, the Offensive Z, and through Outlook, which is uh, the Offensive Zone at Outlook.com. Uh, and from us, we'll see you next week, guys. See you later.